So once we've figured out how to do a simple if and a simple else, really the next thing we want to do is figure out how we can have more than one true-false condition. Um, there's nested decisions, but nested decisions are kind of not the best if you've got uh, like a parallel question, like if it's a one, if it's a two, if it's a three, do something. So here's an example where it, it's not dependent on anything else. We're simply checking this number to see if it's greater than five or anything else. Well, as you might imagine, maybe I wanna know if it's equal to five. Right now, this bit of code won't tell me if it's equal to five, right? Because if I put in a five right now, it's just gonna come back with a five. So if I enter a whole number and I enter a five, oops, and I actually put it where I'm supposed to put it, it just simply comes back and says five is not more than five. Well, that's true, five is equal to five. So how could I do something to make sure that I can actually test for five? Well, so this is where the if, l if comes in. Um, l if simply says else if something else. And we can do as many of these as we want. So uh, in this case, I'm just gonna do a single l if statement, right? What I wanna do is I wanna test user number to determine if equal to five. All right. Um, and so we're gonna start with an L if, L if, and I can spell, I know I can, L if, and it works just like an if, L if user number is equal to five. Now remember we have to use that double equal sign, right? Because a single equal is an assignment double equal is equal. And uh, if it's true, I want to print user friendly message. Again, I want to make sure that I'm describing everything fully um, because I'm going to add some white space to make it a little easier to read here. Because remember, I'm writing this for a grade, right? You probably wouldn't do all of this documentation if you were writing it uh, as part of a program. But if you want a grade, uh, you got to put this in here, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to say print user number uh, is equal to five. And we use a number since we use numbers everywhere else. So now we can take a look at this and see what's supposed to happen. There's going to be a true-false test. Is the number greater or equal? Is the number greater than five? Excuse me. True or false? If it's true, it's going to say more than five. If it's false, it's going to go to the next block, and it's going to say, "Is the user number equal to five? And it's going to say, "True or false?" If it's true, it's going to tell me it's equal to five. If it's false, it's going to go to the next block which in this case is my else. My else says if it's anything other than greater than five or equal to five, but it's not more than five. So let's take a look and see what that does. All right, enter a whole number. So I'm gonna enter a five just to see if it works. Right, five is equal to five, yay, right? I would always wanna test some other numbers to make sure. So if I add a 10, yep, 10 is more than five. And if I check something less than five, Four is not more than five. And I can continue to do these for as long as I want. Let's say, for instance, for whatever reason, I want to test to see if this is equal to 10. Now, I like to put things in a way that they test um, in numerical order just because it's easy for me. Um, test number to determine if equal to 10. And I'm going to go L if user number, and by now, hopefully you've guessed, I'd say user number is equal to 10. Print user number is equal to 10. And of course, I need my comments. I'll just copy and paste those because that makes my life easy. I copy and paste though, I do need to make sure that I change them to read correctly, equal to 10. All right, let's test that and see what happens. Enter a whole number. Well, if I put in a five, it's gonna say it's equal to five, yay. Right? If I put in a 10, oh, 10 is more than five. So why? 
did it do that? I very clearly wrote this line to said check the equal to 10. All right, so as we can see right here, here's the problem. The very first thing it did was check to see if it was greater than 5. All right? If it was greater than 5, it printed this statement and it left the code block. All right? So I have a couple of choices. I could use a nested statement, right? And uh, nest this in here. I could also rearrange my philosophy here, right? And try doing it this way. So since 10 is going to be greater than 5, I could just flip things around and put my 10 there. If username is greater than 10, then it's going to say is equal to 10. I'm just going to do some copying and pasting because it's quick here. Right? And then I can check to see, well, is it greater than 5? Is it greater than 5? Is more than. Than 5. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to fix my pseudocode, um, but you'd understand you'd want your pseudocode to correctly reflect that. But now when I put in a 10, Put a 10 in the right window. I can see 10 is equal to 10 and it bounces out. And if I uh, do something else, like if I say 5, enter whole number 5, actually it's entering whole number 6. 6 is more than 5. Let's go ahead and try another one. Enter a 5. 5 is equal to 5. Try another one. Enter a 4. Or is not more than five. So you can see now my logic works. And this is why we focus so much on this conversation about logic, how things work. But as you can see, instead of doing a bunch of convoluted nesting, I just needed to reverse my logic here to get the number uh, so it would test properly. Hope that helps.